Will battery recycling be the future? Find out why we think it will. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. This episode is sponsored by Magic Spoon. It's pretty universal that a lot of us love cereal, but most cereal has some problems. Yeah, cereal is usually full of sugar and bad stuff. And a lot of us now know that gluten is what makes us feel yucky, and many cereals have gluten. And that's why we're big fans of Magic Spoon cereals. Magic Spoon has somehow figured out how to make their cereals healthy and still make them taste good. Yeah, for instance, Magic Spoon is high in protein, 13 to 14 grams per bowl. And yet it's low in carbs, just four grams per bowl. And zero grams of sugar. And every bowl of Magic Spoon is grain and gluten free. Yeah, take a look at this chart. Compared to other major brands, Magic Spoon is hands down the healthier choice. So now you can feel like a kid again and enjoy a bowl of cereal. And Magic Spoon has a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So pick up a box of one of Magic Spoon's great flavors today. You can get your own at magicspoon.com slash NYK and use our code NYK to get $5 off. And we're sponsored by Henson Shaving. I've been using my Henson Shaver for months now, and I've never before looked forward to shaving as much as I do now. Instead of it being an expensive chore, I know that I get a really consistent shave because I can replace the blade every other shave and not break the bank. And Henson is still offering this amazing deal. Buy a shaver using our code now you know to get 100 blades absolutely free. And they're double-sided, so you could be ringing in next year with the same box of blades. Up until now, recycling one of these is a lot like recycling this. Or this. It feels good. Like you're being a responsible, earth-loving citizen to toss your plastic and glass into the recycling bin. And in many places, it's the law. You have to recycle. You can't just throw that plastic bottle in the trash. But we've reported how most plastic in this country does not actually get recycled. So even though many people do their part and they throw it in the proper bin, at the end of the day, it's cheaper for manufacturers to buy virgin plastic pellets, made of course from hydrocarbons drilled from the ground, than it is to buy recycled plastic pellets. So... In the U.S., only 8% of recycled plastics were actually made into a new product. Only 8%. 79% is sitting in landfills. Or worse, floating around in our oceans, streams, and lakes. And glass isn't much better. Only about one-third of glass gets recycled in this country. About 3 million tons. And of that, only about 40% actually gets recycled into glass products again. A lot of glass either just goes into landfill or gets crushed into road base. Why? Because in this country, we don't sort it. Okay, okay, but you tuned in to hear about these. Batteries. What about recycling these? Obviously, these are a lot different than cheap plastic and glass. I mean, this 18650 cell costs like $3, not a couple cents. Surely it must be worth it for a recycler to get the good stuff out and recycle it. You'd think so, but up until now, recycling one of these first means that you, the consumer, has to do the right thing. And that's a big problem because you have to go out of your way and not just throw it in the trash. Yeah. Did you know that Americans throw away about three billion batteries every year? Instead of just throwing it in the trash, which is easy, you have to bring it to a place that collects batteries and throw it in the proper battery recycling bin. Wait, that's all we have to do to solve the problem is throw it in the bin instead of the trash? People, just do the right thing. Stop throwing them in the trash and bring them down to the store and throw them in the recycle bin. All right, I think I've solved the problem for you. Uh, not so fast. Uh, you see, even if you do the right thing and bring them down to the store and throw them in the recycle bin, most often they still don't get recycled. Wait, what? But I put it in the recycle bin. Yeah, well, don't just take my word for it. We just interviewed Erica Guerrero. She's the CEO. And Luke Workman, he's the chief battery scientist from Red Avivus. It's a battery recycling startup. And here's what they had to say. The more research I've done into recycling, the more I've found that a lot of recyclers just throw them away or burn them. And so I think us as consumers feel good when we drop them off somewhere and we're like, oh, yeah. I did my part, uh, but they're not really getting recycled a whole lot of times. Is that something you've heard too? Yep, um, unfortunately, a lot of the places that they end up is uh, on barges that go to areas in China where they're incinerated and uh, the ash that's left after they incinerate them is what's recycled. And so they're not entirely not recycled, but it's a uh, it's almost a universal process, but a but also a universally dirty process. I, I would argue that it's actually better for them to be burned than it is to be put into a landfill because you do have the the ability to reclaim some of the materials from that. But overall, burning trash isn't a sustainable solution. 
So let me get this straight. I do the right thing. I take my spent battery down to an authorized battery recycling place like my local town hall or hardware store. And then an authorized official battery recycler picks up this big box of old batteries and then most of them just get burned? Yeah, Luke and Erica worked for years helping companies optimize their electric powertrains. And when they wanted to recycle batteries responsibly that they had just tested, after researching where they could bring their spent batteries, they couldn't find anyone who could guarantee that the batteries wouldn't just end up getting burned. But that can't be. I mean, we're not the smartest people, and even we know that there are valuable materials inside these batteries. Yeah, but there is a problem with this battery. Um, what's the problem? Is this battery full of charge right now? I don't know. I can't tell just by looking at it. Oh, right. I mean, if it's fully charged, it could be dangerous if I just throw it in a box of batteries. Oh, a box of batteries is actually dangerous. Exactly. If you read the fine print on a battery recycling box, it will ask you to do two things. Number one, discharge your battery fully before throwing it away. And two, cover the terminals with tape so it can't short out. But have you ever seen anyone do that? Not really. And I mean, most of the time, you're not throwing away battery cells like this. You're throwing away a battery pack from a drill or some blue wrapped up thing that was stuck inside some piece of electrical equipment. So you're saying that those boxes full of old batteries are actually dangerous boxes full of old batteries? Right. Just moving them around is like moving a ticking time bomb that could explode at any moment. So they're usually moved into a metal dumpster and then off and they are just set on fire to reduce them to ash, like Luke said. Okay, but I mean, you can get valuable metals from the ash, right? So burning batteries is one of the methods of recycling. It's called pyrometallurgy, and it's the most common strategy used in commercial efforts. Now, this recycling process can produce some high purity material at the cost of emissions, but it's considered the least environmentally friendly because, well, just look at a dumpster fire. Does that look like a clean way to handle batteries? Okay, but I mean, I don't see a lot of places that like have giant plumes of smoke where they're lighting batteries on fire. Uh, yeah, because usually we ship those problems somewhere else where we don't have to see them, like China, Southeast Asia. I mean, remember, that's what we used to do with our recycling plastic. We just were like, oh, we're not going to deal with it. Why don't you take it? And we would just be polluting other parts of the world, which, of course, gets into the oceans. And I mean, yeah, our Earth is a big water globe. So it's you can't really drop something in one spot and not expect it to eventually reach the other side of the planet. Exactly. OK, but you said that that was one way to do it. Pyrometallurgy. Is there another way? Yeah, there's hydrometallurgy, which uses an aqueous or water based solution to extract metals. But that typically requires high chemical water and capital demands. Still, it sounds better than dumpster fires. Yeah, but here's the problem. That box full of batteries is dangerous to even move. Putting it on a truck and driving it around is actually a hazard. So it has to be handled as hazardous waste, which is expensive and potentially dangerous. The way that many of these handlers get around that hazmat law is that the sign on the box says that you, the consumer, have followed the rules and discharged the batteries and taped up the contacts, which we all know is largely not true. But what I want to talk about is your EV battery pack. You know, that big pack that's powering your car. Sure. Uh, what about it? Well, what if you want to recycle it? I don't want to recycle that. that. That's my car's battery. I needed to drive around. It's working great. And I want it to stay that way. But what if you got into an accident and your car got really damaged and your battery pack got damaged? What would you do with your battery? I don't know. Some tow truck would come and tow it off to a junkyard. And then what? Oh, I see. The battery pack would need to be recycled. OK, so I guess the same company that recycles the batteries from the hardware store would come get my battery. Yeah, they don't want your battery. Why not? It's full of great metals. I mean, I'm sure most of the cells are fine, even if a few are damaged. And let's face it, there's there's thousands and thousands of these cells in it. They'd want all that material. Yeah. But first of all, it could be full of energy. You could have just charged up before you got into the accident. That means thousands of watt hours of potentially dangerous energy all sitting there. Nobody wants to move that battery till it's discharged. Oh, right. And I mean, discharging a battery pack, I mean, especially a damaged one, is no easy task. You can't just sit there and press the accelerator and wait till the pack is out of juice because obviously the car is disabled. Right. You would need an expert to go around and carefully peel back parts of the pack to expose the cells, then attach resistors with alligator clips until the pack was down to an almost zero state of charge. Well, that sounds expensive. Yeah, prohibitively expensive. And then even when the pack is at a low state of charge, it's still dangerous. We all know what happens when lithium metal gets wet. It does this. 
Right, because my car was probably already doused with water at the scene by fire trucks, and it's probably sitting there exposed in a junkyard, and even if one cell gets wet, it could catch on fire. So wait, what does this mean? What is this episode even about? Is this just a bunch of bad news? I thought we were going to talk about solutions, so now EVs are just bad? Hang on, hang on. Okay, we've got some good news. Recycling batteries is hard, but the reason we are speaking with Erica and Luke is that they were so upset about there not being a good solution to this battery recycling problem that they developed a solution. Wait, what? How? Remember you asked Luke about what would happen if you crashed your Nissan Leaf? Okay, Okay, so tomorrow, uh, let's say I'm driving my Nissan Leaf and I get into a car accident. It's pretty bad. And the... The battery, I can see the battery, which I normally can't, so that's not good. Can I call up Red Avivas? And what, what would you do if, if you arrived on scene with all your equipment? How would you make this so problem, which is a, a, a fire hazard, how do you make it go away? Yep. We would need to do whatever it took to separate that pack from the vehicle. In our situation, uh, we get to blast freeze your leaf pack right from full and uh, in a relatively short period of time, it. It would depend on what model of leaf pack you had. The thicker the batteries are, the longer it takes for the blast freeze, but it's surprisingly fast. Um, and once this pack had reached the uh, appropriate temperature that we knew for your cells would shred tolerantly and uh, allow those shreds to then uh, drop into the neutralization tank, we would stop the blast freezer and it would be conveyed from the blast freeze chamber into the mouth of the first stage shredder at which point it drops in the second stage shredder and those second stage shreds go into the aqueous buffering solution, which will neutralize it into a, a mixed metal oxide slurry of neutral pH. Wait, and now, now you're saying that Jesse's leaf battery, which moments before was a fire hazard, is now just a bunch of materials that are fine to transport? That's right. It's, it's a bunch of neutral pH aqueous metal oxide shreds so wait, you like, just uh, saved me a lot of money because before i had to somehow yeah. safely transport this whatever you know 100 miles now it's just that's right it's just a truckload of stuff and uh these shreds are not too much different than say wet beach sand at the end of this neutralization process from a uh Hazard's perspective. wait so redivivus has just turned a potential incendiary bomb into wet beach sand That's awesome. I mean, now my battery pack can get transported to a recycling facility. That must save so much money and it must be so much safer. But how does my beach sand battery now get recycled? Well, we asked them. Okay, so now you got this wet beach sand of materials. You bring it back to, say, your ready cycle plant. Um, Is this have any value? Is there anything good you can get out of this? There's so much we can get out of these battery materials. And so that material essentially gets transported to our ready cycle process. And from there, we're really focused on getting a nickel cobalt alloy, which we're calling Red Avivus Nickel. And that's what we plan to sell to the super alloy industry, the stainless steel industry. And we're even working on refining our processes even more as we continue to have those lower parts per million contaminants, as they're called, uh, to open up more markets on where we can sell these materials. So this sounds awesome, but I'm a bit confused. I mean, I saw footage from, say, like Redwood Materials. Um, that's the battery recycling company started by J.B. Strobel. And they were putting batteries into a big cauldron and like melting them down. Yeah, Red Avivas does it differently. They use an aqueous solution, a water-based solution. Their novel no-burn hybrid ready cycle process recovers battery materials in a mostly closed loop process. But how come I've never heard of this before? Well, Red Avivas is a brand new startup. We interviewed Erica and Luke before they even formed the company and shared this information with you on In-Depth, remember, back in March. If you were a Now You Know Investor Club member, then you remember we had a video live stream with our members and Erica and Luke to answer questions about their new startup and how you could invest. So can you still invest? Well, we have our latest full interview with Erica and Luke over on our Disruptive Investing channel where you can learn more about that because we invested in Red Avivas ourselves, remember? And we want to share what we believe is an exciting investment opportunity with you. Now, disclaimer. We are not financial advisors. Do your own research. We are invested in the company because we think it's a good long-term investment. But whether it's good for you is up to you. So you do your own research. Okay, okay. What Red Avivus is doing sounds great. I mean, EVs just like ICE cars are going to get into accidents. And Red Avivus' process is definitely going to make getting those batteries transported to recycling facilities cheaper and safer. But this still doesn't seem like a big deal. 
Not a big deal. Well, okay. How many EVs are on the roads today? Uh, like 5.6 million, but not all of them are getting into car accidents. Sure. And even though EVs last way longer than ICE cars, they don't last forever. So eventually those battery packs are going to reach end of life and they're going to need to be recycled. But that's just the cars on the road today. Each year after this, there are going to be more and more EVs on the road. So let's say that an EV battery pack lasts for 10 years. I mean, Tesla batteries are warranted for eight years, although many 2012 Tesla Model S's are still driving around fine with their original packs. But let's just say 10 years to give us a nice round number. So in 10 years, there will be 5.6 million battery packs that need to be recycled. So let's say that the average battery pack is 75 kilowatt hours. If it costs $100 per kilowatt hour to make, then, wow, that's $42 billion worth of batteries. And that number is going to grow every year. We're pretty sure that like all other technologies before, like refrigerators, TVs, cell phones, etc., the adoption curve for EVs is going to grow according to an S-curve. That means that adoption will look slow at first and then boom, an explosion, almost a vertical takeoff as people demand the new technology and it gets cheaper and cheaper. We're actually seeing this take place right now before our eyes. A couple years ago, there were just a couple EV models to choose from. Now, there are 22 new models coming onto the market in 2022 alone. But it's really hard to estimate how many EVs will be on the road in five years, let alone 10. But let's just take a look at how many vehicles are on the road. According to China's Ministry of Public Security, there are 297 million cars in China. Statista puts Europe at 292 million and the U.S. at 283 million. The rest of the world is thought to have about 500 million, putting the grand total at 1.4 billion, with predictions putting us at hitting 2 billion cars by 2030. Now, I want everyone to clear your minds of facts and figures for a second. I want you to just imagine life 10 years from now. If you're watching this channel, then you're probably on board with the idea that there is a transportation revolution happening and that before long, ice cars will be a thing of the past. Like horses became a thing of the past. Yeah, back in 1900, it would have been hard to picture a world that didn't involve horses. But we all know what happened. Ten years after the automobile was introduced, horses all but disappeared. Ten years from now, believe it or not, ice cars will have all but disappeared. That means hundreds of millions of battery packs. All those battery packs are resources. They are not waste. They contain almost everything you need to make a new battery. Now, recycling isn't 100% efficient. You don't get back everything that you put in. But as Red Avivus has already shown, they are retrieving 92% of cobalt and nickel. These are expensive metals, and they're right here. We won't need to mine so much if we recycle more. There are ways to invest in this future. We get asked all the time. I believe you guys are right. So how do I find companies to invest in? That's why we started the Now You Know Investor Club on our Patreon. We currently have over 1,800 members where we talk about this subject on our Slack and in our monthly live streams with CEOs and founders of companies. And we bring you our weekly Investor Club bonus stories to help share the knowledge we are learning as we research the world's most innovative companies. In fact, a little plug here for our Investor Club, all of our videos are available to watch at any time for our members. Even though we have live streams, we do record them and we keep them up so you don't have to just be available when we do the live stream. This is also why we started the Disruptive Investing channel, because as these new technologies come online and disrupt old technologies, not only can we profit from investing in them, but by investing in them, we can actually speed up the transition to a sustainable future. Now, I know it sounds corny, but you are why we do this. You are part of a community of thousands of people around the globe that get it. You know that EVs, solar, wind, batteries are the future. By working as a community, we can share this new information and we can make the world a better place. Now, as we wind up 2021, I hope everyone is looking forward to an exciting new year. There are so many smart people out there doing amazing things. They're inventing new products, new technologies. They're starting new companies. We are honored that you included Zach and I into your lives. We appreciate you watching and we take this responsibility seriously. We strive to find interesting people and stories to share with you every week on Tesla Time News and here on Depth. Your support as viewers, subscribers, and patrons has allowed us to expand our content. And with your support, we will continue next year and beyond. Thank you for watching and supporting. We'll see you next year. Now you know. know.